Abe's music changed in 2016. The world lost David Bowie, George Michael, and Prince all in that same year. What I find really interesting about all three of them is that they were pioneers who fiercely protected their artistic vision. Each of them faced challenges within the music industry. Bowie got locked into this awful contract for all these years, and the only way that he felt he could get out of it was to intentionally release horrible, awful songs until their contract expired. Then he released an incredible album as soon as he was free. Now, George Michael sued his label, Sony, to release him from what he described as a slavery contract. Prince even changed his name to a symbol to defy his record label, asserting control over his identity, his artistry, and his music. Now, these three artists didn't just make music. They redefined how artists could operate within the industry. If we talk about Prince's final project, he was working on a book called The Beautiful Ones, and he really wanted it to be almost like a how-to manual in making it in the music business without selling your soul. He shared that his book was about one overarching thing, freedom, and the freedom to create autonomously without anyone telling you how to do it or why to do it or how it should sound. So let's explore a little bit about Prince's life. His father, John Nelson, he was a jazz musician. He also had an explosive temper. His mom, Maddie Delashaw, was a beautiful, fun-loving party girl with a stubborn streak. And Prince laughs often when he talks about her sneaky flair. A quote from the book from Prince says, she would spend what little money the family had for survival on partying with her friends. She'd come into my bedroom and in quotes, borrow my personal money that I'd made from babysitting the local kids and then chastised me for even questioning her regarding the broken promises she'd made to pay me back. This gives us a little bit of an insight into how Prince grew up and what was going on in the household. Prince shared how much his parents influenced him for better and for worse. The wound of your parents fighting is chilling when you're a child, Prince wrote in his book. If it becomes physical, it can be soul crushing. Just four days before he died, Prince added into his book this central idea that his parents were really the main dilemmas in his life. His mom emerged in the book, very free spirited, very headstrong woman, someone who would not allow herself to be held and told what to do or how to do it. And of course, we see this time and time again in Prince's career. Now his father, he was disciplined, very religious man. He worked two jobs. He was concerned with getting food on the table and keeping everything running. And you see that in Prince too. He's often talked about as having this immense work ethic and the commitment to make things happen, putting it out there and following through. Prince said that he liked order, finality, and truth. And these were things that he ascribed to receiving from his father. But if a DJ put on something funky and he wanted to go dance, that would be his mom's influence. So I think in the ways that he was trying to reconcile how these two came together in him, there was a lot of tension between that. Prince's parents both had strong personalities and they divorced when he was about 10 years old. If you really listen to Prince's lyrics, so much of his writing is about division in some way and really the fight to pull it together and make oneself feel whole again. There's this kind of brokenness that he's always working to repair. I've always been pulled into the lyrics of his work. Yes, they're sexy. Yes, they're fun. Yes, they're danceable. And there's this deeper meaning. As we look into Prince's romantic life, he was married twice. Manuela was Prince's second wife. They met in 2001 when she worked for his charity organization. She shared that philanthropy was really what brought the two of them together, and Prince encouraged her to start her own charity that she's really dedicated to. Prince met his first wife when she was just 16 years old. She was backstage in Barcelona after her mom made sure that Prince received a tape of her dancing. After she graduated high school in Germany at the age of 17, Prince became her legal guardian. She moved to Minneapolis where Prince's kind of headquarters were and they helped her get set up with her own apartment. 
Prince waited until she was 19 to begin their relationship, and after four years together, they married on Valentine's Day. Their only child, Amir, was born with a very unfortunate syndrome and was unable to breathe without a ventilator just six days after birth. What many found really strange was a week later, the couple was on the Oprah Winfrey show where they pretended their son was still alive. I can only imagine that they were completely unable to process this death and were sort of going through the motions, uh, simply not able to acknowledge what they'd lost. Now they remained sort of working through their grief. There was a lot of upheaval. And very sadly, they had a subsequent miscarriage after this loss, and their marriage completely deteriorated after that loss, and that's what ended their marriage. Prince wasn't able to complete the writing of his book before his untimely death, and the book writing process, he was really able to really work with a lot of his past, coming to terms with a lot of the elements with his parents and his marriages in his life. He came to the realization that in many ways he was the sum of his mom and his dad, and they were in, in a way, two poles of his being. I just thought what a poetic, very prince-like way to come to terms with what I share with my clients very often, that we are half our mom and we are half our dad. That's biologically, chromosomally and the epigenetic imprints of what they struggled with, what they went through, the challenges that they had, they do live on in us. If you'd like to explore your family imprints, the things that happened to your grandparents, your parents, and your childhood, and how that has shaped your relationships today, how you parent, your confidence, all of the pieces of you, let's have a conversation. You can find a way to book in time into my calendar to explore how this personally re relates to you just in the comments section below. When I think back on those three musical geniuses, David Bowie, George Michael, and Prince, I'd like to imagine that their influence on music continues on, the way that artists today have been influenced by their sound, their originality, and in hopes their creative freedom and how they move forward with record labels, not having to compromise the way they want their music to be or to sound and to have that creative expression. If you're liking this channel, please consider sharing it with others you think would benefit. Subscribe and comment below. I'd love to hear from you.